Hey guys, what's up? Chris Blum here with ChristopherBlum.com and today I wanted to do a quick accompanying video to my post on power in commercial buildings. And I'll start out with the same disclosure I did on that post, which is I am by no means an electrician and recommend you consult one if you have any active power requirements or questions. So starting out, power is drawn in watts or wattage and can be given by the formula voltage or volts times current, which is given in amps. So there's multiple ways of delivering the same amount of power or wattage depending on the configuration of the voltage and the amperage. And there are a lot of analogies using water that can make this process easier to understand. I'll link one of my favorites above, uh, which uses water guns. But essentially the output is given by voltage, which can be thought of like pressure in a water system and amperage, which is uh, like the flow rate and that gives your output, your work, which is the wattage. So in most larger residences and smaller commercial buildings, there is typically 200 amps available and 240 volts. This would give 48 kilowatts of power or 48,000 watts of power. The main difference is in commercial buildings, this is typically three phase power and in residences, it is typically only one phase power, which is described in the article in more detail, but that can be important for powering larger machinery in industrial settings. In industrial buildings, you may get more amperage. So 400, 600, or even a thousand is common. And the voltage will typically be 240 or 480, although you can get higher voltage. The voltage and amperage supplied to a building can be requested by the listing broker or by looking at the panel inside the building. And again, because wattage can be supplied by manipulating either the current or the voltage, there are multiple ways of getting to a power output that you need. But practically speaking, it's my understanding that it's much easier to manipulate voltage than it is current, which requires working with your local utility company. And in my area, this may mean a eight to 12 month wait because the utility companies are so backed up with requests. Another interesting fact to point out is in smaller buildings, so residences and smaller commercial buildings, the transformer, which is stepping down the voltage to the amount supplied to the building is owned by the utility company and is offsite Whereas in larger commercial buildings, this step down is done on site and the equipment is owned and contained within the building uh, by the building's ownership group. So when considering your power needs, it is important to understand a building's amperage, the volts being supplied, and whether or not it is three phase power. Again, typically commercial buildings do have three phase power. However, in my area in San Mateo County, there are some older commercial buildings that will only have one phase power and 100 amps available for a 20 or 30,000 square foot warehouse, which really means that you're not gonna be able to power uh, any kind of heavy machinery and probably not even be able to power smaller machinery in that scale. So back to typical usage in an office setting, the appliances that you'll use, computers, monitors, phones, all require a certain amount of wattage. For example, a laptop might be 50 watts and the monitor that you're using might be 40 watts. I think the information provided in this diagram might be a little older. So if you have more energy efficient uh, equipment, then maybe it would be lower. But for easy math, we'll say that a two monitor setup and a laptop would require 120 watts. If the uh, serviceable voltage of the line is 120 volts, which is typical, then it would require one amp of current to power this setup, which is pretty low and would probably not place a high burden on your office setting. In residences, it's typical to have 15 to 20 amp circuits, but in a commercial building, this might be larger. So it's unlikely that computers alone would put a heavy burden on a building or floors power requirements. Again, typically the heavier usage is gonna be from systems such as the HVAC and maybe the appliances in your kitchen like the fridge and dishwasher. And from research online, adding up all of the typical appliances used in an office gives a power requirement that is around four watts per square foot which again is not gonna be a huge strain for most commercial buildings available power. 
I hope this quick video on power was helpful. If you would like more information, check out the original article below, leave any questions and comments. And as always, if you're enjoying, please subscribe.